Welcome to another edition of Small Talk for You. This morning we're going to get into something that's a little different in Small Talk, and that is the conditionals and messages like that in Small Talk are messages. They're not part of the syntax. So in most languages you might have built-in operators like less than and greater than. I mentioned binary messages the other day. This is a binary message. One less than two. And I can send messages like if true, if false as messages to that. So this is just one message sent to this Boolean object. So if I do this printed on just that, I get back a true. So that's a Boolean. And I have if true, 100, if false, 42. So one is less than two, so I should get back the 100. So here's that, if true, if false. And I can reverse that also. It turns out there's an if false, if true, although it's almost never written that way. So I can do this, transcript open. I should get this. So let's put that transcript aside. And then here, 3 greater than 10, if true, do this, if false, do this. Let's try that and do a do it instead of a print it. And over here, no, 3 is less than 10. So that's how that works. And like here, 3 equals 3, if true, we should go to the next lesson. So let's try that. And sure enough. Now, loops. Again, we use block syntax a lot in loops. And again, these are messages, not built-in syntax. So I have 2 colon do colon is a message sent to 1. So 1, 2, 100. And by default it's going to be 1. There is a way of doing this by more mess. There is a way of skipping by 2, by 3, by whatever, by any arbitrary number. We're not going to get into that today. Now loops. Loops and collection iterators, they're implemented as regular methods. They're not syntax, they're just message sends, which means you can go into the system and find their implementation. If you want to find all the stuff in Smalltalk, you just look in the browser. So it's a little simpler in some ways than most languages. You don't need some huge hairy book of syntax, you can just look at the system. So 1 to 100, this is just iteration. So here I have this, it's going to drop out those numbers, so I'll do a do it. If I go over here to the transcript, you can see the numbers dropping down, there they are. If I wanted to do by some other number, 1 to 100 by 3, you'll notice the way this is going to work is I can step by other numbers. I could do positive numbers or negative. Notice the way that works. It just flips out the same kind of thing. Notice by negative 2. 1 to 1 do. This is kind of a silly way of using it, but that's the way these things work. Every collection iterator type method in Smalltalk is a message send to some object. Let's go on to the next lesson here. So do is sent to a collection of objects, an array, a set, any kind of ob collection object. And here we can do this, do colon, and we're going to send the object in as the argument. So this is the way you can iterate over a collection and send each individual thing in instead of having to index. So instead of having to index into the collection, I can conveniently have each object come to me. So I can say this collection do each and print them out. So let's just try that and see how that works. And we should just get each element, and sure enough, look down here, that's what we got. There are some other nice iterators that are kind of cool. So here I can take and collect the absolute value of each. This is a way of doing a transform on a collection. So I take a collection, collect colon, I should get back a collection exactly the same size with the result of this message send right here, the last one in the block. So if I do a printed on that, I get back the absolute value. Notice the negative 2 became a positive 2. This is another collection, each odd. So I should get back that a bunch of Booleans on this. So it's going to tell me that one was odd, that one wasn't. Notice the result of the message send gets collected. Now select's a little different. Instead of collecting and doing a transform, we're just going to grab out of it each one that comports to this Boolean. So I have, is each one odd? If it is, throw it in the resulting collection, otherwise don't. So we do this. We should only get the odd elements, and sure enough. Now we have reject. Here we're going to just take the ones that don't pass our test. So we'll try that. So we should get all the ones that are less than 10, and sure enough, all the ones that are less than or equal to 10. So we got that. Notice that we're using greater than instead of greater than or equal to. So that's the way these things work. You can do all kinds of interesting transforms with collect. You can select objects that match a condition, or you can reject the objects that match a condition. And the interesting thing about this is this is all built into the library. It's not syntax. If you're ever confused over how these work, you just look them up in the system. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with whatever small talk you're using.